Hello, good evening. We have to start with a talk. So, welcome once more to the Republica Festival. Uh, my name is George Krivokapic and I'm a lawyer from Belgrade. Uh, I'm a lecturer. I do a lot of stuff in SHARE Foundation. Among one is uh, policy and research in shared defense. My colleague here is Elizabeth Boehm. Elizabeth, present yourself, please. Ah, uh, my name is Elizabeth Boehm, as you said. I am a student at the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, and I came to Belgrade to work gotcha. for Share Defense for about eight weeks, and now I'm here presenting to you. I'm not on. One, two, one, two. You're on? I am on. Okay. I know. Okay. So we're going to talk about different stuff today. We're going to start with reputation as a concept. And what does it mean practically? Reputation is in fact information which can predict your future. It says something about you, how you're going to behave tomorrow. And that's her purpose. And does it matter? And what's the value of reputation? If I'm sorry in the back. People in the back, I'm really sorry, but we have a lecture here. Okay, so the question is, how much do we value our reputation? Uh, and if we approach reputation from financial point of view, we can say that intangible asset of 500 biggest companies in the world in, in 1980 was only 20%. In 2010, it was 80%. Those are all intangible uh, assets. One of them is reputation. That's a big part. So people say that in a market system based on trust, reputation has a significant economic value, and data says the same. So what about you? Do you manage your own reputation? Do you value it? Who does some kind of management of personal reputation here? Is there anyone who doesn't do that, who don't care, who thinks it's not important? Practically, as we are young, if we compare other values and other goods we have, like money, knowledge, reputation, or skills, what do you think which is the most important one to you? W would you consent to lose all your money instead of losing all your reputation or otherwise? So, where the reputation exists then, we can see it's not only related to us personally. It relates to all kinds of legal entities, like organizations and non-formal groups. Many of you are parts of different organizations. Their reputation is quite connected to your reputation. It's like connected systems. So you grow together. But where do we find reputation? How it is created? What's the process? Okay, we have reputation here in a pool. We have a lot of data out there, and these data are quite different kind of things. They could be facts, they could be opinions, and we have different concerns regarding them. We have a question of quality and the context. So same information could be used in different way. For example, Elizabeth and I, we had the same room. And practically, she's an intern from Pitt Law. I'm a kind of her mentor here, and I'm not allowed to share a room with her. But the organizers put us together in the same room. So that data out of the context could be used to say, like, we went to the, I took my mentee. Married to, mentee. Married mentee to the nice, pleasant, stay in a seaside. So w what would happen then in in US if they know that fact? You would never get hired back to be a guest lecturer. You would not look bad for me as a student, personally. As far as a professional repu reputation, obviously how I get my jobs is I sleep with my boss. Yeah. So there will be many consequences on that. So we don't share room together. But I still have a problem because that info is in some kind of table. And that table is shareable. 
and nobody knows how that info will be taken away in some point. So we have a problem with, with, problem with presentation, but then all these data are out there. There are many of data, and then community is the creator. It applies different social norms, different rules of behavior to data which is available, and then creates a reputational information saying that we are good citizen or bad. But there are many concerns. Firstly, which are the social norms which are applied, and who selects that social norms? We usually have some right thinking uh, person in the society who determines that. And we all, always have problem of objectivity. On the other side, we have something called reputational systems. Those are practically businesses collecting data and then collecting dissemination and disseminating reputational information based on data available on you. So they create scores while the community creates descriptive judgments. These scores are numbers and will all become number in a certain way if reputational systems can use all our data. They will say, okay, you are a very good husband or you are not based on the places where you go. If you go to clubs and your credit card goes uh, through the uh, credit card point there, th there could be calculated how much devoted you are to your family, practically. So, we have concerns. That's the quality of that information which is used and the reach of each particular reputation and trust. Do we believe that information? But still, that's a private interest. We want to have our control over our informations and we want to have uh, the right to manage the information about us. On the other way, we have a public interest. We need use this reputational information every day on the market or in society. We don't have time to do whole research. We practically use one or two informations we have about somebody and then we make decisions. So we need that these reputational informations are good, good quality. If they are not, there's a problem. And how do we get to good quality? We have a lot of open informations and we make decisions on our own. And then we have internet, which changes kind of rules of the game. It provides like unlimited communication and everybody of us are becoming the medium, somebody who creates the content about others. And then everybody has detailed digital dossier, freely and accessible, easily, permanent. We do not have a possibility to create another chance. We can't move to the other city and change the identity. So critical points where other people are creating information about us, providing opinions or giving some facts, are the quality of these informations and lack of accountability because many of them do that like anonymously or pseudo-anonymously. And then you have internet internet reputational systems, for example, rate my professor or the erotic review where you can practically rate some girls who can hang out for some money. Uh, one of them is don't date him girl where all the girls are putting anonymous information about bad boys. So uh, Todd got that his dog, that he has sexually transmitted diseases and he was a lawyer, lawyer in Pittsburgh. So he decided to file a claim, but then he didn't solve the problem because all community then find out what is written somewhere there about him. So he just created a bigger problem for himself. So it's not easy. Then a Spanish, Spanish surgeon decided to sue Google, ask Google to remove information about him, which was posted 15 years ago. And it was incorrect in a way. And Google refused. So Spanish agency for data protection asked Google to remove and made the decision and Google again re refused. And there were some other cases which went to the European courts and Elizabeth will tell us a bit more about them. Okay, so what I'm about to talk about is the uh, right to be forgotten, but first you should consider, do you want to forget? Our minds generally work, time passes, we forget past slights, we forget people who did us wrong, we remember the good times. The internet, 
The internet doesn't forget anything. The internet has every Facebook photo you deleted, it's still there. Flights you looked into booking, it's there for about six months, even if you did, you did not proceed any farther. So, but is forgetting bad? Uh, for example, the example that was given earlier, on paper, it says that Georgia and I, we stayed in the same hotel room together. In reality, I stay in the dorms with friends. I might be able to get that data removed, but up until now, say I go into politics or, you know, somebody who really doesn't like me, they can throw that information right back into my face if I ever want a job. On the other side, the internet stores memories, it stores your good things. You can go into your Gmail history. I probably have five-year-old emails. Say I want, you know, a friend contacts me five years down the road. Say, okay, forgetting that in the past, said friend, we had a pretty, we ended on a really bad note. We had fights, she took advantage of me. I pull up my Gmail history, and those conversations, they're all in there. Yeah, I, I can remember that. There, there is a good example. Like, there are some people, you receive messages through Facebook asking you a favor. And then after some time, you realize that you have in a thread like five times request for something, what you provided them, and then you have one time request from your side from them, and they didn't do anything. They didn't even reply. So then we can assess our associations in a way. Or maybe we okay. want to forget. There's still a question. Or perhaps you want all those lovely pictures of you from Facebook, drunken on the floor, to be deleted forever, so your future employers don't see them, or you just don't want to remember them. Next slide. Yeah. So the reason we're talking about this now, and it's come up to be a huge issue in international law, is the European Commission, they proposed a right to be forgotten. And what that is, is any user, if this passes, would be able to go to a service provider, to Facebook, possibly Google, not very well defined. But say you want to go to Facebook, you want them to delete your personal data, you submit a request, and they would have an obligation under this law to delete every file they have on you. You can request deletion because it's no longer necessary for the purposes of their collection. You wish to withdraw your consent. All those boxes that pop up, do you consent to post this and you just ignore them and you click OK? Or you, there's no legitimate interest for them to have, any more, have it anymore or you really just want them to take it down. What happens, so the EU, uh, or the, sorry, the European Commission proposed this in January of 2012. One month later, the United States steps in and proposes their Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights. A month later, the Federal Trade Commission proposes their regulations. The United States did not go as far as proposing a right to be forgotten, for which I'll discuss later, but what it all expresses is that we have an interest, a privacy interest, in the things that we post online, even when we make them available to the public. But there's a, as with any proposal, it's highly debated. There's a lot of problems. Um, as far as controllers, who would be the people processing your information, they have a vast number of requests, which they're not, at the moment, not exactly equipped to handle. Example, in France, while the right to be forgotten is still contested, the number of complaints under the right to be forgotten rose 42% last year or alone. Most so, so just to, to ask the audience, what do you think right now? Should we have a right to be forgotten? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. The Gr Great Britain has recently come out saying for this reason that it's not feasible to be able to implement, they've come out and said they would like to opt out, joining the U.S. doesn't really matter as far as EU passage, but the U.S. has been, so far, the main uh, supporter of non-passing. The other problem is that providers could face high fines, up to 2% of their global turnover. 
Two percent for 2%. Google of global Which turnover. Gets to be about hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay. euros. So just imagine now, we just all get this right. Who would use it for some data? You know something you would like to remove. Definitely many of you in your room. But just imagine all the intermediaries start receiving the requests of each one of us. What kind of labor and system do they need to process all that data and then to make right decisions? How much does it cost? So that would just turn into the removing all the information regarding the requests because they can't process that kind of information. So we all get the right to completely control the data about us. So do you think that's possible, like feasible? But as users, we want to protect our reputation. I came across an example of a teacher. Well, she was in the program to receive her teaching certificate. Her school found a Facebook picture that she had posted. She was at a party, legal drinking age. They kicked her out of her program, did not allow her to finish getting her certificate because of con uh, conduct unbecoming of one of their students. To show you just how much data you're putting out there, a face, uh, Max Shems, uh, he, he want, attempted to remove all of his personal information from Facebook. Took, about a se took several months. In the end, he received 1,222 pages of material. So he was a low student who, who didn't even graduate, didn't enter any business relations. Like more than 1,000 pages only on him. And in this respect, Facebook altered its data retention policies because of this case. But it creates other problems. You have uh, the main controversy I sorry, spoke of earlier, the US versus the EU, the privacy versus freedom of expression. Uh, EU puts forth, we need this because privacy is a dignitary right. You have a right to protect what information is out there about you, whether you post it, or someone else, you have a right to go and say, this is damaging, I want it taken down. The United States, on the other hand, we have a love of freedom of speech and freedom of expression. So one of the main problems this causes is it's damaging to freedom of expression. You remove anything from the public sphere, you take something out that's already in public discussion, it takes away from the marketplace of ideas. Because this doesn't just apply to Facebook, it applies to all digital media. So blogs, news providers, which there's some exceptions, at the, but I won't go into them because they're not very well defined at the moment. Um, it, it would apply to everything. So you go to, I don't know, it's the Huffington Post, a news provider say, I want all references to me taken down. There's a debate right now whether that can happen or not, whether you can take something that you didn't write out of the public discussion, out of the free exchange of information, so, so and chill public speech. And that way you just manipulate the public sphere. You just get the opportunity to determine what, does the, what are the topics of discussion and to create completely artificial you. Control the past. So, who else is affected? I touched on businesses, um, but in the larger global scheme, if this were to go through, at the moment, uh, it's the Data Protection Directive and some other minor policy solutions which governor, govern your uh, digital privacy rights. Some of those were set up specifically so that EU companies and companies who are not on the same data uh, privacy standards could trade with companies in, in the US who have a different set of standards. The right to be forgotten includes some of those, but were it to pass, the companies would suffer from a severe loss of business. They wouldn't be able to trade with certain companies in the United States or in other countries that don't have such a high standard. 
And that is like a global influence to the informations in a manner that there is already 27 states in the EU. There is 15 states more who follow the EU practices. So that would practically determine the freedom of speech in one wider region and create two parallel webs, one in US and the other one in Europe and Asia. And this one much more restrictive for any open exchange of information. And the reason it would be worse going forward is because of the recent privacy or freedom of speech yeah. laws passed in the United States where any laws, et cetera, that do not meet our standards or that would impede on freedom of speech, we don't follow. And by we, I mean the US does not follow. Yeah. So just for the end, the question is how do we manage this content? How do we regulate this reputational pool and all the information there? Right now, the solution is impose law that will uh, provide uh, obligation for intermediaries to remove everything on user's request. And if they don't comply, then you enforce the law and high fines. Uh, as we said, that would like destroy intermediaries' ability to manage that data. And they will just approve everything because of uh, high fines. On the other hand, we can more use community, community as self-regulator, who can then provide the information on the quality of each particular data and say, this information is incorrect, it's been proven that it's incorrect, should not be on a Google first five pages, but still should be there somewhere with all the comments about the uh, clarity or quality of that information. And we should also use code. We should use reputational mechanisms and systems, again, for ideas and for information. So this would practically conclude our talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nakon Twittera došao je Vine video u trebu.